Nobody said that the process of building a brand is easy. As a matter of fact, experts in other major companies have expressed how complicated branding really is. Despite this, a large number of people still commit the rookie mistakes of proceeding with branding blind and sort of take it for granted. Hey guys, welcome to Creative, where we help athletes, sports marketers, and athletic business owners learn how to build lasting legacies beyond the game. Every Tuesdays and Thursdays, we talk about solutions that can truly change the business of sports. Today, we'll be discussing brand guidelines and why they really matter in unlocking great branding. We'd love for you to tackle that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything in the future. In spite of the common knowledge that branding is a pretty complicated process or that it's not complicated at all, there are still some people who think they can slap a logo on their name and call it a day. When the truth of the matter is that it takes more than some fancy logo for you to build a strong brand that transcends time. If you want to develop a brand that can withstand the changing market, then you need to have a set of brand guidelines to follow. So what are brand guidelines and how do you really utilize them? Well, if you've been planning or building your own brand, then you've probably already heard about brand guidelines. Clear rules and standards that guide you and your team on how your brand should be represented to the rest of the world. Similar to a style guide, brand guidelines are developed to help companies ensure that their brand messaging, visuals, and language are consistent and stay true to their main goals. Thanks to how competitive the sporting industry has become, it's easy to be fooled by anything that shines or trends. Newbies are tempted to jump on bandwagons just for an ounce of attention from sports fans. And oftentimes, these brands don't think about whether these viral and trendy posts match with who they really are and are supposed to be. This is where brand guidelines come from. The handout will include your brand's mission statement, your core values, alongside other crucial elements like tangible components like logos and color schemes and even fonts and your tone of voice overall. Your brand guideline should be something that everyone in your business has, starting from your digital marketing team down to your sales reps. They should have a great understanding of who your brand is and who it wants to be in the market. See, one mistake can do a lot of damage to a brand that you're building. And because of how conscious sports fans now are these days, it's important for budding brands to be as consistent as they can. Now that we've covered some of the basics of brand guidelines, let's talk about what brand guidelines normally include. There's no exact template for brand guidelines and, and every branding agency will have a different idea of what they look like. But here's a list of inclusions generally followed by everyone. And most guidelines start with the intangible parts of a brand. Your brand identity. Every single component that will be included in your brand guidelines are based on one thing, your brand identity. Your brand guidelines should have a dedicated space for your brand identity, detailing who your business is supposed to be and what consumers can expect from your brand. Keep in mind that your brand identity dictates the other important facets of your brand. Hence, it's only apt that it's included as part of your overall brand guidelines. Your brand positioning. We've talked about it before. We'll talk about it in the future. Now that we know you are as a brand, let's talk about where you want your brand to be. Brand positioning is meant to be the main goal of your company. It showcases how you want to be perceived as a brand, as well as where you want your brand to be in the future. Without a clear brand positioning statement, 
It'll be hard to determine and measure just how successful your brand strategy is. Your overall brand promise as a personal brand or as a corporate brand. Your brand promise is meant to highlight what makes you different from your competition and what sports fans can expect from your brand. Think of it as your elevator pitch, a statement that draws your people in enough for them to get to know you. Your brand promise should be clear and concise. Your mission statement, your vision, and your core values. Yes, this is not a business plan. This is more a brand strategy. And what's the purpose of your brand's existence in the first place? To keep your people passionate about the work they are doing and to convince potential fans that you're different from your competition. You need to have a clear mission. And what you put on your brand's official mission statement is the entire why of your brand. Once you have your why, the next statement that you have to think about is your brand's vision. Similar to your brand positioning statement, your vision statement is meant to showcase what your brand hopes to achieve in the future. This means that your vision statement should include the objectives your brand aims to do. Another important thing that your brand guidelines should include is your core values. A company's core values should act as the foundation of its brand and how it operates. They're meant to be practices that a brand uses in everything that they do every day. If you're unsure of what you put as your core values, ask yourself a question. What kind of brand do we inspire to be? Your brand messaging. Your brand messaging is another important element that brand guidelines should have. Your brand's main message should be consistently delivered and communicated regardless of the platforms you're using. Similar to your brand promise, this statement is meant to be your brand's main selling point to its potential customers. In a short statement, your brand should be able to showcase who they are and what they hope to achieve and how they plan to do it. Keep in mind that regardless of the platform you plan to use, sports fans don't generally spend a lot of time reading through posts unless one specific thing catches their eye. Hence, it's important that your brand message stays short and sweet. You've heard other people online or during references. They all have different tones to their voice. Let's talk about the tone of voice. Now that we have a message to communicate with your fan base, let's talk about how you will share that message with them. The tone of voice that you'll use when communicating with your fans should be consistent with your brand identity. There are certain brands that use brand archetypes to figure out what tone of voice works best for them. What everyone conceives is the easiest, the logo. If not the most important, visual representation of your brand will always be your logo and your brand language. Hence, it only makes sense that it's the first tangible element on your list and what you go off of to develop the rest. Besides the actual logo, your brand guidelines should include different iterations of your logo from small versions that you use for your infographics or mobile versions of your website down to the bigger ones that you use for major collateral like banners and big wall graphics. Certain guidelines also include a set of rules or instructions on how to use the logo as well as what not to do with the logo. Your fonts, something totally missed by most brands. Some brands make the assumption that typography or fonts, to make it simple, isn't important to branding. But in reality, your chosen font family can easily affect the overall visuals of your brand. Some brands assign different font families for their various platforms. Their website uses a font that's not too different from their social media counterparts. Keep in mind that your brand guidelines should teach your designers and other important members of your team the official visuals of your brand language. This means that it should include a strict set of instructions on the design profile of your brand. Your color palette. I've talked about this before the psychographic traits of your fan base. 
Another crucial visual element that your brand guidelines should include is your official color palettes. Most guidelines include a primary and secondary colors used on most of their media. Now, similar to your logo guidelines, this section of your brand guidelines should include instructions on how to use the color palette. And depending on the needs of your brand, some guidelines also include other relevant imagery that brands need for its visual identity. T. Like we've mentioned earlier, the inclusions of a brand's guidelines may differ from one file to another. The sections we've mentioned above are only some of the routine parts of the guidelines expected. And in our next video, we'll explore building an actual brand guideline for your needs. We hope you guys loved today's video. And if you want to learn more about the great solutions that can truly change the game, don't forget to tackle that subscribe button and that notification bell. It really helps the channel. Now this is Zach with Creative, where business is our sport.